What's up, guys? How's it going? It is Matt here. So, uh, what do you guys think? So, a nice little shirt there. <laughs> my wife picked up some Scooby-Doo shirts for my kids, and I got one, too. So, now we're, we're twins as my four-year-old called So, what we're going to be talking about today is, uh, this is going to be tips for new carriers uh, when it comes to the carrying farm. So, this is a tip for new gun owners who are, you know, went out finally and got their firearms and are now carrying guns. Um, with the pandemic that went through, there's a lot of people that went out to buy guns because they realized firsthand that they are responsible for their own safety. And they also realized firsthand the actual gun laws and how it works to actually purchase the firearms. So hopefully we get their votes for the next election when it comes to uh, gun stuff. But anyway, this is not a political bill or anything like this. This is a new carry tip. This is this is for new gun owners. This is a tip for carrying guns. So this, if you're brand new to carrying firearms, you might want to tune in for this. So let's get into it. Now, it's like this. Um, for those of you who have been with me, you've, I've been around for several years on, on YouTube. Um, those of you who are new to the channel, I'll give you a quick little update of who I am, um, basically. I did two tours in Iraq as a Marine Corps rifleman. I was also a, a member of the Arizona Army National Guard. I was actually a rifleman through there, and I was also an armor. I worked with armory in that. I, I Currently, I am a certified NRA pistol instructor. I've taught a lot of classes over here. I haven't taught in a little while, but I have, have taught a lot of classes over, or a lot of people over the years. And I have literally been carrying pistols for over a decade. <laughs> over a decade. I used to work in the gun industry for a while. Nowadays, I work in the tower community. I, I, you know, I'm a safety manager for a tower company. But this is going to be for the new gun owners out there. So you got yourself a gun and you want to carry it. What, I can, what you guys can learn from listening to this video will help you when it comes to concealed carry or open carry, whatever you so choose. So first thing we're going to start off with is welcome to the gun community, right? Welcome to the gun community. All right, welcome to the American gun community. <laughs> now, the second thing we're going to talk about is we are specifically going to be talking about firearm safety. You know, I'm not going to go on to a long thing. I'm hoping to keep this a short video. But if you've taken classes, you should know these safety rules. If you if you don't, then these are the primary safety rules. Treat every gun as if it is loaded. Never point a gun at anything you do not intend to shoot. Keep your finger straight enough to trigger until you're ready to shoot. Keep the gun on safe if, if it has a safety until you're ready to shoot and... Last but not least, know your target and what is behind it because bolts go through things. And if you have to defend yourself, be sure that there's nothing in the backdrop. It doesn't matter what type of ammo you use, there's a high probability it's going to penetrate through the actual target that you're shooting at. So keep those in mind with the safety rules. If you want, again, just play it back and rewind it and play it back and you, you, know, you can learn them there. The second thing we're going to talk about is carrying. Okay, now that you have a gun, it's time to carry the gun. All right, it's time to carry the gun. You want to carry the gun, you understand the importance of carrying the gun. There's two main techniques. There's open carry and there's concealed carry. Open carry means it's open where everyone can see it. And concealed carry obviously means it's covered. No one knows that you're carrying a gun. You can carry whichever way you want, whatever your state laws are, whatever like that. I would highly recommend you carry concealed. All right, when you carry concealed, there's less eyes on you. You'll be less, 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 less subconscious about carrying a firearm. You won't feel uncomfortable in public places, especially if you're new to the gun, gun community. And Pete, you can go about your everyday life carrying a gun and most people will not even notice you. Probably 90% of people, if not 95% of people, won't even notice you because most people are so stuck in their own little games or in their own world that they don't really notice things that's going on. So I'd recommend concealed carry, but if you want to open carry, rock on, rock that open carry. Now, the couple biggest carry mistakes that I've always seen. Now, this is one of the biggest carry mistakes I've always seen. Every single one of my guns, this one right here, this is a Glock 19, are loaded. All right, there is a round in the chamber. All right, that means if I point it and pull trigger, it will go bang. All right, so there's a round in the chamber, and that's how I carry my guns, because that's how they're designed to be carried. So, carry them with a round in the chamber, so if you have to pull your gun out, the last minute you can pull the trigger and you can shoot someone. Now your safety rules keep the finger high enough to trigger till you're ready to shoot. So the one mistake that people make when they're getting a new when they when they start carrying a gun is they don't carry a round in the chamber when it comes to semi-automatic. They do not carry around the chamber because they don't feel comfortable with it. Always carry it loaded. 
All right, always carry it loaded. The safest place your firearm is on your body. And if it is loaded and it's in your possession, then no one else can get to it. And if you pull it from the holster carefully and you keep your finger high enough the trigger, you will be a very safe when it comes to the actual hand of the gun. So like I said, all mine have a seat in there, round in the chamber. One of the biggest mistakes I've seen a lot of security footage is people pull the gun out to defend themselves and they pull the trigger, it goes click because they were nervous, didn't carry it with a round in the chamber. So now they got to go rack and get it ready to fight, and by then, it's already way too late. So, carry it with a round in the chamber, especially if you have a semi-automatic gun. Now, the gun I have right now is my 1911. This is my favorite gun that I own. This is absolutely my favorite gun I own. This is safe. This is the safe way to carry a 1911. The hammer is cocked, it is cocked back, and it is locked. This is the safety. There's a safety here, there's a safety here. So if I hold a grip on this, if I don't have a good solid grip on this, I put the safety down, I pull the trigger, nothing will happen. However, always keep that safety on because that is the fourth safety rule, right? So you need a good solid grip on this, and this hammer will not go down and go off, okay? It will not go down and go off. So if you like 1911s, this is the best way to carry it right here. And then learn how to ride your thumb on that safety. So when you pull it out of the holster, you put that safety down and then it's on the target and ready to go. So this is a safe technique, all right? This is a very safe technique. So if you see someone with a gun in a holster like this, don't freak out. This is the way how you carry a gun like this, all right? Now, the next thing that I wanna cover is holsters, okay? You have to have a good carry system. And I've talked about this a lot in my videos. It's not just a holster and not just a gun. You have to have a full-fledged system, which means belt, all right, holster, all right, belt, holster, gun. Those are the systems you need. You need a good solid belt. You can't go out and get yourself a Walmart belt. It's flimsy. It'll bend all over. It will not hold up the weight of the firearm. You need to have a good solid carry belt. Me, I choose Core Essentials. I'm not pulling it off right now. I choose Core Essential. Core Essentials has a technology inside that keeps it rock solid so you can't squeeze it. What, it, what that type of belt does is it holds up the weight of the firearm better and it doesn't collapse on itself. So the gun in the holster, regardless of the weight, even my 1911 heavier gun, it doesn't flop around. It stays where it needs to be at all times. You have a good solid belt and it'll be a lot more comfortable when you're carrying a gun all day long. So get yourself a good solid belt. There's lots of good makers out there, Core Essentials, Galco. There's uh, leather makers that look for reinforced leather or like Am Amish handmade Mohai leather belts. They work pretty well. 511 Tactical has some belts that are a little bit pricier. There's a lot of different belts out there that you can find when it comes to actually carrying a firearm. The way how to test it is pick it up and squeeze it. If it doesn't collapse on itself, then it will be a good carry belt. So you need a good carry belt. Then you need a good holster. If you buy, if you put a lot of money into a gun, put a decent amount of money into a holster, all right? You don't need to get yourself a $200 holster if you really want to go for it. But you're talking price range between 40 and above. That's like the best price range you're looking at, 40 and above. If you go on eBay, you might find some really good deals. You can find like 20 and above. But keep in mind, they might not always be the best quality. So if you don't know what you're looking for yet, then I'd recommend going with specific other types. So you can go to stuff like if you're, you know, look, you know, lower end stuff, you can go like alien gear holsters. Those are a hybrids inside the waistbands. Crossbreed holsters, uh, that's another good one for inside the waistband that you, they have outside too. Um, you have Blade Tech. There's a lot of, there's a lot of actual holsters out there for various makes and models. Um, I could go on and on. There's so many holster makers out there, guys. Go check them out. Go find them. They're good to go. Um, so get yourself a good quality holster that is designed specifically for your gun. You can't just go out and buy a random holster that works for every gun. There's a lot of people that, you know, one of the first mistakes they make is they go out and they get themselves like an Uncle Mike's holster. Now, the best way to compare an Uncle Mike's holster is right here. This is a duty belt, all right? It's this type of thing. It's like a nylon, all right? And it just flops around on the waist and it bounces around. This is actually a duty belt it's designed to be carried. This is a drop rig. This is my defensive rig. I'm not going to get into that for now. But that's just something I, and falls down. That's just something I picked up over the years in military service. But don't get a, don't get a nylon holster to carry the gun, especially if you're looking at a concealed carry because it's just not going to conceal. It can be very uncomfortable and it wears out the finish of the gun really good now. That's not a bad thing, having a worn out finish, but there's some people that do, that does bother them a lot to it. So you want a good quality holster, whether it's Kydex, whether it's leather, whatever it is. So I'm gonna show you a couple options that are out there. You're looking at a pancake holster or a taco holster, right? So the first thing we'll start off with is pancake, which is my personal favorite types of holsters. So right here, 
These are called pancake holsters. All right, there's two points of contact with the belt. It goes through here, it goes through here. Same thing here, it goes through here, it goes through there. I can actually switch to get specific grips, put this on the other side, make it inside the waistband. But this one is set up for an outside the waistband holster. All right, these are pancake holsters. This balances the weight of the actual gun itself. This balances the weight of the gun, makes it a lot more comfortable on your body. Now these, once again, these two specifically here are outside the waistband holsters. This right here is a pancake inside the waistband holster, right? Same thing, you notice? This is actually appendix, but this is a pancake inside the waistband holster. There's two points of contact. It pulls the gun flatter to your body, all right? And it balances out the weight of the firearm so it's not shifting or bouncing around. So that is a pancake holster. Then there are taco holsters. Notice the taco kind of looks like a burrito. I guess you could say that. One point of contact. All right, one point of contact. There's some that have like two straps here that's still a taco holster. You need, if a pancake means they're spread out. These right here are taco holsters. These are, these are pretty good. They're very simple for inside the waistband. Just grab the gun, slide it on your belt, hook it on your belt, make sure you're good to go. All right, this is a very simple way to go. It works well. It doesn't work as good as a pancake holster, but it does work well. Where a pancake holder kind of pull, you know, pulls it more closer to your body. This is like a little hump on your side, a little bump on your side. However, these do work good. This one's for 9 to 11. This is for a Glock 19, all right? Now, currently, right now, what I'm using for my 9 to 11 is a pancake outside the waistband holster, but that's because I have no intention on leaving anywhere. I mean, it's stuck in the house, so I'm not going anywhere, and it's more comfortable to carry on the outside the waistband. The second I go out in public, I go inside the waistband every single time I go inside the waistband. So that's the type of holsters that you're going to want to look at. Don't go out and get yourself a crappy Uncle Mike's kind of whatever type of holster that's like nylon and bounces around. No, those are not good holsters. You want it to protect, to be solid. You want it to be solid, all right? And you want it to be able to protect the trigger guard. You notice the trigger is completely covered. So nothing can get in here and actually get in the way of the trigger. You want that trigger guard completely covered, all right? So don't get like an Uncle Mike's or something like that. A lot of them don't fit properly or whatever it is. I'm not just saying Uncle Mike's, it's just a general thing. That's one of the first holsters most people get. There's a lot of types of holsters that are just like that crappy nylon stuff. Get yourself a Kydex or a leather holster. Those are the best way to go. Cost a little bit more money, it's, it's worth it, all right? It's absolutely worth it. So the next and final tip that I want to teach you about is ammunition, okay? Ammunition. Now there's two types of ammunition. There's full metal jacket and jacketed hull point. And I think I have a couple around out here. Let's see. You have this right here is a full metal jacket, FMJ. This right here is a jacket hollow point, okay? See the difference? This one's sunken, it doesn't work. I use it for a demonstration before. See the difference, you have a curve and you have a opening, all right? This is standard ammunition. Most people call this target ammunition. The military calls this carry ammunition, all right? This punches holes through things and it keeps going. Um, a lot of energy is released, but this will go through things. And with a bigger caliber, it doesn't really, you know, it'll do some ser uh, serious damage to it. But a smaller caliber, it'll still do some serious damage to it, but won't do as much damage as something like this, okay? A jacketed hollow point round. When this is fired, it shoots, it hits something, it expands, it opens up, and the energy is released in the body. And with some luck, it doesn't punch through. Um, there's still, oh, what's that fifth, with that fifth, fifth safety rule? Know your target and what's behind it. So if you don't have a clear backdrop, don't shoot, right? But this has a higher probability of being stopped in the body. However, they do still go through. So a lot of times they still do go through, but with a lot less energy than something like this. When it comes to a 1911, I carry this. It works very well and it shoots very well from it. When I carry a 9mm or a smaller caliber, I go with these jacketed hollow point. So if you're, depending on where you live or something like that, a lot of people tell you, you can't use, you, this, you, this is dumb. You shouldn't be using this, stuff like this. This works fine. This gets the job done very well. It just goes through things. You don't need this in order to defend yourself. However, it is recommended, right? So that's the two types of ammunition that you're gonna to wanna to use. Now, another tip that you're gonna to wanna to use is you need to train and practice on a daily basis, all right? So what you could do is you go out to a local gun store or eBay, look for snap caps, okay? They're called snap caps, okay? Right here, it's a dummy round. It's This is a nine millimeter. It goes into a nine millimeter magazine. It feeds into the actual chamber of the firearm. 
but when you pull the trigger, it doesn't go bang, all right? It is plastic, it, it is a practice round. It has a little rubber pad on it, so when the hammer or the striker goes down, it protects it. These are great for practicing in your home, whether you have targets set up, whether you have some sort of system like this, where you have actual training lasers. There's training lasers that have a couple of those. You can actually set it up in the chamber and use those. Those are a little bit pricier though. So, but you need some sort of practice rounds. So right here, dummy rounds, practice them, use them, all right? There you have it, guys. Those are the very basic, the, the very first things that you wanna consider when purchasing a firearm, especially for you new gun owners out there. All right, so you got to have safety. Safety is in mind. I gave you the five safety rules. If you need to rewind, go back to that at the very beginning of the video. Rewind them, look over them, understand them, know them, memorize them. All right, you have to have a good system. That's the second thing. You have to have a good system. So you, that means a belt and a holster. Okay, belt, holster, gun. All right, it's not just gun and, and holster. Belt, gun, holster. All right, you can use a regular belt. It's not going to be that much the most comfortable. And it doesn't work very well when it comes to actually carrying the gun. And it's, it's, you're going to use the bathroom. It's going to be falling off your hip and all that other good stuff. So get a good, solid, reinforced carry belt. Okay, there's lots of name brands out there. And get a good quality holster. All right. A good quality holster. Don't go with a crappy nylon type of holster. All right. Go with either Kydex or Lever. The next thing to remind, remember, guys, is keep that chamber loaded for Pete's sake. Keep around in the chamber. Practice with your snap caps all the time. Practice with the snap caps, pulling it in and out of the holster, getting it in and out of the holster, manipulations. Keep that finger off the trigger. Keep it loaded, all right? That is the safest way to carry a firearm when it comes to the defense. If you don't feel comfortable with a loaded chamber, then you're gonna have to work on it, all right? If you, you're still gonna carry it, you know, go ahead, um, carry it if you want, but you're, there's a risk factor there, all right? When, a, if a bad situation happens, hopefully it never happens. Most more than likely it'll never happen to you, but you never know. There's a high probability that you won't be thinking you pull that gun in the holster, you might pull the trigger before it's around the chamber and guess what, it's already too late and you're gonna end up in the hospital or worse. All right so keep that round loaded all right keep that chamber loaded all right you can always keep that chamber loaded then the next thing is ammo guys there is ball ammunition and a jacketed hollow point both work both work well for defense and range ammunition jacketed hollow point is a lot more expensive and is a lot better for carry especially if you're really worried about penetration however with good safety rules and everything else ball will work just fine it's a lot cheaper and you can buy a lot more of it However, if you're carrying a lower caliber, you're going to want jacketed hollow point for actual carry ammunition, whereas a bigger caliber, hard ball is good, although they do have jacketed hollow point that works very well too, but ball works good too. But once again, ball goes through things, so full metal jacket goes through things. Fifth safety rule, know your target and what is behind it. And then the final thing is, guys, is practice and train. Get yourself some snap caps. Get yourself a laser trainer. Have a clear area with a backdrop that's clear. Down in my basement, that's all grass and dirt out there. And then now the, the ground level is up there. Make sure you are following the safety rules when you're down there practicing, getting it in and out of the holster, pulling it out of the holster, put it on the target, pulling that trigger and going click with those snap caps. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about me. If you'd like to help support the channel, go check me out on Patreon. Whether it's a dollar a month or whatever it is, you can help support this channel. Remember, guys, it is our responsibility to take care of each other and protect each other. Peace.